produce questions as we proceed through the presentation. Um, some of the items that you see on this presentation are those that we presented. If you had tuned into the Board of School Directors meeting, you will see some similar pieces from that presentation, but we're hoping that we can um, provide a bit more clarity for you. Dr. Ekman, I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to let everybody know that this presentation is being recorded and will be posted on the website as well as the cyber brochure um, beginning tomorrow. Okay, so with this presentation, um, we are going to focus specifically on cyber. So if you give me just one moment, I'm going to um, share the presentation for you. Some questions that we had ahead of time that I'll be happy to answer. Will free and reduced lunch be offered to cyber students? The answer is yes. Free and reduced lunch will be available. We are working with our food service um, to find an established time for our cyber uh, families to pick up their lunches for the week. Um, there will be the link to register will be posted in the chat. So if you did not receive or you have not registered and after tonight's presentation, you can make a solid decision. The registration link will be posted in the chat. Okay, with that said, um, we wanted to start off with just some basic information. So in the middle of July, approximately July 14th, we had conducted a survey for families of which we had about 2,500 participants. So the district currently has about 3,400 students. We felt that the 2,500 participants um, for 2,500 students was a very good turnout rate. At that point, we asked you at that point in time, if you would be considering sending your student to brick and mortar, which is a term that we use to be in-person instruction or synchronous or asynchronous virtual learning. Synchronous virtual learning, which is a ter term that we'll explore a bit more thoroughly in this presentation, essentially means live teaching and learning. Asynchronous teaching and learning is essentially self-paced, independent coursework that a student would be completing. At that point in time, you can see how families responded. So you can see that from kindergarten through 12th grade, there were approximately 30% of respondents who were indicating a virtual option. We say that there's approximately 20% of those respondents who at that point in time in mid-July were indicating their desire for a synchronous cyber environment and approximately 10% of families who were indicating a desire for asynchronous. Again, as Ms. Lambert stated, there was recently a survey that was released and we will show you that survey um, to help guide your decision making at the end of this presentation, but that survey will give us a little bit more information as far as where folks are falling with their registration choices. As of today, there were approximately 1,100 students for whom that survey was completed and that survey will be open until August 5th for families to lock in their choices for the upcoming school year. Again, as you will recall from past presentations, we have essentially three choices for students in K through 12. For students in K through six, it will be recommended that families can choose in-person or brick and mortar, or they can choose a synchronous or asynchronous cyber model. For students in seven through 12, there's a hybrid learning option, which is essentially every other day in person, brick and mortar, and then the opposite day to that engaged in cyber virtual learning. And then um, for pre-K families, if there are any pre-K families on this call, there was a separate survey that was sent to pre-K families and we have 51 students who are registered for our pre-K program. At this point, we are intending to offer all pre-K on site in brick and mortar. However, if we have 17 students who choose the virtual option, we will be able to hold one virtual pre-K classroom. So we wanted to jump right in and explain um, basically what the models look like and then I'm going to come back to um, what schedules would look like. 
So in that July survey, we asked some questions related to cyber. And this is really to help guide our teaching and learning team as we explored what our cyber program would look like. So for families who at that point in time were looking at cyber as an option, you can see how families responded. So some things that families felt were important included required attendance, providing of recorded instructional videos, a set schedule, and progress monitoring updates from the instructor. While perhaps less important to families, the opportunity to, partic to participate in extracurricular activities, that will be something that families do have the option to do. You can see some additional areas that were built into that survey for families consideration. Again, it helped us to drive our decision making processes for our cyber environment. A morning meeting or advisory period to help build relationships, live teaching and learning in whole group, small group, or one-on-one -on -one formats, and then live teaching and learning for special elective classes. and some additional data that helped us to make some important decisions. You can see that families indicated feedback on submitted assignments would be very important, opportunities for independent practice, and teacher availability for extra support. A bit less important were projects-based learning activities and virtual field trip experiences. However, families did feel that they were more than somewhat important. Um, additionally, and Ms. Lambert will speak about this um, later in the presentation, opportunities to receive related services for those who qualify through their 504 or individualized education plan, on-site or virtually. With that said, it helped us to develop our model. So there's two virtual options that students can choose from. Our first is iSync and our second is iCyber. So we did want to differentiate between the two virtual options because they are indeed very different from each other. While there are some similarities, it's very important to understand that iSync, the synchronous option, is live classes in a virtual setting on a set schedule. An asynchronous cyber program, which we have deemed iCyber, is more self-paced, where there isn't necessarily a set schedule, However, there are set due dates for assignments and student work would be progress monitored throughout and students and families would have opportunities to schedule appointments with teachers. Both programs, for those who have younger children, both programs would definitely require some support from adult family members at home to log in and navigate, especially in the first few weeks of cyber learning. It will be a change of um, teaching and learning practices, and we do expect, especially for our younger students, while we will have an orientation that there could be some assistance needed from adults in the household. So we'll start first with our iSync model. Synchronous virtual education means that students will meet together in real time and be able to receive instruction and also receive feedback from their peers. The students can meet in whole group, small group, or on in an individualized basis with teachers. There would be a set schedule and routine that follows the same schedule as brick and mortar peers. And again, I will go into this in a bit more detail and show what that schedule may look like. The big piece to this is that students will be part of a classroom community. So it is possible if I have, say, a third grade student who attends Prospect Park Elementary and I choose to send my student to iSync, they may be in a synchronous classroom with students from Glen Olden, Norwood, and Tinicum who are also completing iSync for third grade. The good part about this is that they might recognize some familiar faces from either the athletic fields or their kindergarten academy experience but they do get to participate in a classroom community and stay connected to other kids who are in the same grade level in the Interborough community. Students can receive related services if they qualify either remotely or come into the school building if the family should so choose. 
there will be the ability for families in either iSync or iCyber to have access to live technical assistance throughout the school day. There are a variety of ways that our technology department can assist families in troubleshooting to ensure that they have a successful educational experience. Most importantly, the instruction and curriculum is delivered by our teachers who have been trained in cyber education practices. You will see some of the different technology and software tools that we're building in to enhance our teaching and learning experiences for the coming school year. Students, if they should remain in the iSync program through graduation, will receive an Interboro School District Diploma. It is possible for families to make the decision if situations should change to move from iSync into a brick and mortar classroom. However, there will be specific dates on which families would have to give notice by to be able to do that. These dates are listed there, October 23rd, January 8th, and March 26th. This would be to move from iSync to the brick and mortar school or from the brick and mortar school into the iSync environment. It is important to note that if a child has an IEP and needs to move between environments sooner than that or at a different time, there would be an IEP team meeting and it would be an IEP team decision. I will come back to the schedules in um, just a bit. The asynchronous option has students who are completing coursework at their own pace. The students would create a schedule on their own to reach important work deadlines. Students and parents can receive extra help during uh, virtual office hours and schedule appointments to meet with teachers during the school day. The teacher would be progress monitoring and sending reports to parents. And as their iSync peers, students can receive remote or in-person related services. Again, it is possible for students participating in the iCyber program to enter the school building if their family so chooses to receive those related services. The iCyber program is perhaps a bit more um, successful for those students who are self-motivated. Again, like the iSync option, families can access technical assistance throughout the school day to troubleshoot any difficulties that arise. For iCyber, there is rolling admission. So if a family at any point decides that they would like to leave the in-person brick and mortar or the iSync environment for the more self-paced iCyber program, they would be able to do so. Our curriculum and learning will come from our inner borough teachers. In some cases, courses will need to be supplemented from Brandywine Virtual Academy. We've had a relationship with Brandywine Virtual Academy to deliver our cyber learning for approximately six years. Um, so this is a group that we're very familiar with. We would be using them on an as needed basis if there are particular courses that we are unable to staff with Interver School District professional staff members. At this point, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can just um, take a moment or two to pull up the schedules. And while I do that, Ms. Lambert will continue to moderate some questions that were asked. Um, some questions regarding materials. At this time, we are asking that parents continue to um, complete the supply list that were put out at the end of the year. Any additional materials that will be needed in iSync or iCyber will be provided to you. Another question is regarding textbooks. If students will be given their textbooks when they pick up their devices, you will get a schedule if you choose iSync or iCyber to pick up your device. Mr. Sonnet will be talking about that at a later time this evening. Um, a question was, is the school district picking whether your child is iCyber or iSync? No, that is a family decision. That is something that you should sit down with your child and have that conversation with them if you are choosing the cyber option of iSync or iCyber. Um, another question was, does the K through six have a hybrid option? K through six is attending all day, five days a week. The hybrid option applies to grade seven through 12. If they choose iSync, it will be much like a regular traditional school day and they will go five days a week, um, as well as seven through 12 would go five days a week in the iSync model. iCyber, as Dr. Ekman explained, is much more fluid and much more self-paced and self-motivated. 
Okay, so with that said, that's a perfect opportunity to take a look at um, some various scheduling pieces. So this would be particular to the iSync program where the students would be engaged in live teaching and learning rather than being in person in a classroom. This would be happening over electronic means, which would be Zoom. So Zoom will be the conferencing platform that we will be using for the coming school year. So you will see what a brick and mortar student would experience if they were attending in person. And then I'm going to flip to be able to see what that might look like for our cyber I sync students. Um, so it is important to note for us that the requirement is for students to have 180 days of instruction and 900 hours um, of, of instruction. And that's a PDE mandate. So for our K to five friends who take the iSync option, it will be approximately five hours of work per day. And for our six to 12 friends who take the iSync option, it will be approximately 5.5 hours of work per day. Now that will be a mixture of synchronous teaching and learning engaged live with the teacher, as well as some independent practice time. So you can see an example of, and, and we're not necessarily married to these exact times, but this does provide an example of what the cyber teaching and learning team came up with that an I think student's schedule might look like. So again, we've divided the day, and this would be for K to two, and very similar um, for three to five as well. So we've divided the day into three parts. It's important for us to make sure that we are mixing our synchronous live teaching and learning experience with some independent practice because we recognize that students cannot be looking at the computer for five and a half or five hours straight throughout a day. So in this case, we determined it's important to build in a morning meeting that also includes a social emotional learning component. So the social emotional learning piece is going to be very important for our students as they are receiving their instruction at home, we do not want them to feel isolated from their peers and staff. You will see that each core area is approximately 60 minutes long. Now you might be asking, what would my child do in that 60 minutes? So there might be approximately 20 minutes of that that would be whole group instruction through Zoom. And then as a teacher normally would, they would start breakout sessions with smaller groups of students or even at times have independent student meetings. We build in time for some brain breaks, also recognizing that students would need to use the facilities as well. So you can see that there are a few breaks built in there to give students the opportunity to walk away from their work and the computer as well. So you can see that students would have then science, social studies, Orton Gillingham, and that's um, our phonemic awareness program that we're using in K-2, as well as writing instruction. Again, you'll note that there's time for independent work as well as a built-in break in the schedule, and then math. The checkout time is important that the students will come back together at the end of the day and check out with their teacher, just like their brick and mortar peers would be doing. Now it does list this special on there is happening after the technical end of the school day. Our specials, so for instance, PE and health or art, we do feel that they are important for all of our students to have access to. But at this time, the model is that they would be asynchronous. So that would mean that a child could complete their special instruction at any point during the school day or after the school day. They would have to reach set due dates for their special, but it would not be something that they would be engaging in live via Zoom on a daily basis. There would be opportunities to check in through office hours with that special teacher if needed. This is an example of what a middle school schedule would look like. This perhaps looks a little bit more like a college schedule in the sense that on any given day, there would be a mix of direct instruction as well as some independent instruction or small group instruction. So for instance, you can see here what a student's Monday might look like. Again, this is an example of a schedule and it certainly is subject to change, but this is an example of how we anticipate a week looking for a student. So every day starts with a homeroom period, and our idea behind that is check and connect, that it would be a time where students would see their friends, their peers who are participating in iSync with them, as well as be able to connect with an adult on a daily basis. 
In this model, math is happening through whole group instruction on Monday. Um, and then social studies would be more independent. So at this point, um, a teacher could have assigned some coursework where the student would be working through independently. Teachers could, or students could schedule appointments to meet with their social studies teacher, or they could have small group appointments that the social studies teacher has scheduled with them. They then would go into their ELA class, which on Monday would be direct instruction. And then they would move to science where it would be more independent practice, small group or appointment based instruction. We are looking to build in at the middle school level an opportunity for a synchronous special if the schedule so allows, where the students would be participating live with a synchronous teacher. And then they close out the day with a closure and reflection. Just like our elementary students, we found that that would be important to have a check and connect. Tuesday, it looks a bit different. As you can see, they started their week with math through that direct whole group instruction on Monday. So on Tuesday, it will be more small group, appointment based and practice. But then for Tuesday, they would have social studies in the direct whole group instruction. So you can kind of see how the schedule ebbs and flows throughout the week, um, altering between more direct whole group instruction and then the following day, following up with practice, small group, and appointment-based instruction. And that is so that we're cognizant of the fact that students can't be glued to their screens for a full five and a half hours during the school day. The high school schedule, this is actually an example of what the in-person high school student would experience, but we would accept, expect that our iSync students would have a comparable experience. On student A day, they would be receiving their core content. Rather than entering the building, they would receive that virtually. So the idea behind iSync again is a shared experience on a set schedule. Rather than a physical presence in the classroom, that presence is happening over Zoom. So in this day, they would do their ELA, math, science, and social studies. And then in the afternoon, there would be time for any small group, office space, office hour type appointment, and independent practice through asynchronous learning. On the B day, all students in this model, whether they would be brick and mortar in person students or members of the iSync program, would be participating in electives. So essentially, at the high school level, the iSync students who would be on, let's just say, the B day, would be participating in electives with their peers who might, on the A day, have attended school in person instead of virtually. The idea behind this is that there's only so many elective teachers at the high school. So in the case of, let's say, music, if a student wanted to participate in a music course, it would be important to have that offering available. And because of the limited staffing, we would be mixing the iSync and the um, brick and mortar students. Some of the specials will occur synchronously and some of the specials will be occurring asynchronously. And the idea behind this is working with the teachers to determine which special they, can off they feel would be best offered synchronously or live and which specials they feel like would be better run asynchronously or self-paced. Okay, so I'm gonna stop my share and we'll continue to respond to questions. Question has come up regarding class size. Will class size be comparable to what they attended in school? And the answer is yes. The iSync program class sizes will be comparable to what they experienced when they were in school. Um, another question that had come up is, what happens if the school shuts down? Will all of the students that chose brick and mortar join into the iSync program? The answer is no. They will switch into their own technical iSync program from their classroom that they were currently in brick and mortar to virtual. Um, the iSync building, if you will, or program and iCyber program will remain as is, as was. So we also, um, so we also had surveyed parents at the end of, um, sorry. 
could also survey parents at the end of June at the conclusion of the spring distance learning. Um, I think that we can all agree that everyone did their very best in very challenging circumstances, parents, students, teachers, and administrators included. But we did hear from parents and students about some of the things they would like to see happen differently if we had to go to a virtual model in the fall. So we really took these things into consideration as we were planning for iSync and iCyber programs. Um, so suggestions from our open-ended responses that really seemed to come forward through um, our analysis were live classes and instruction via Zoom and more interaction with teachers and peers. So this with our iCyber pro or iSync program will be very easily accomplished. Also, they asked for a one-stop shop, so indicated that Google Classroom was sometimes difficult in that courses were set up differently between different teachers, and also there was a lot of clicking for students to be able to navigate to the teacher's assignments. We will be showing you in just a bit our learning management system, Schoology, to hopefully help with this concern. Communication with gradebook and assignment completion can also be assisted through our learning management system and a set schedule, which is something that the iSync program offers. As Ms. Lambert said, there will be there will be print materials um, that are received. There will be print materials that are received as well as other consumables that students would need to successfully engage in instruction. At this point, I would like to ask our teacher participants, who are in the cyber team, Ms. Chris Cole, Mrs. Chris Polo, and Mr. Riker, to just discuss how they envision iSync and iCyber a bit different than our distance learning in the spring. Good evening, everybody. So, um, you know, I think, uh, from a teacher's perspective, uh, moving forward with each one of the uh, programs that Dr. Ekman has kind of laid out here, um, you know, I, I think just kind of reflecting back and kind of looking at what we've done so far, I think there's four sort of areas that uh, would make for a, a a very a very positive, a very good uh, student experience, especially compared to. Uh, what we went through um, in this past spring. So I think, you know, I think the first thing would be is, you know, based on what we were able to do in the spring, um, you know, we, we have at least a little bit of, a, of experience um, teaching in a virtual model coming from a, a, a teacher's perspective. Um, and I think some of the things that we learned in that time were, uh, were very valuable in terms of what went into the planning of um, each one of these programs. Uh, I think as was uh, has been laid out in the uh, in the survey, um, getting feedback from students and from parents, um, you know, also went into uh, you know what we feel like is uh, developing a good plan for each of the programs moving forward. Um, you know, just speaking from a planning perspective, uh, you know, a lot of what we experienced in the spring, there wasn't really uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of time to. Uh, to, to do a lot of planning, um, you know, I, I kind of refer to it as, you know, we were, we were building the plane as we were flying it. So, you know, we were trying to do our planning and we were also trying to, uh, we were also trying to teach while kind of doing that planning. And it, it just made for, um, you know, for those, those 10 weeks, it just made for a very, um, a very chaotic uh, environment at times. And I think the last thing, and, and, and I'm sure Mr. Sonnet will speak to this um, later in the presentation, but uh, some of the resources that uh, that the district has um, has acquired uh, between um, some of the different technology resources uh, will certainly make the teacher and student experience um, a a vastly different and and certainly better uh, experience than some of the different things that we were able to do uh, previously in the spring during the shutdown. Okay, and I know that coming from a special ed background, um, knowing that all of my kids will have the same um, software and things available to them that I can give them something and know that they have the technology to be able to get it read to them or they can listen to my voice, read it to them, or they can 
upload a video if they're unable to read it or type it themselves. Those things are going to help them. Um, and then we have different ways of uploading the curriculum to them now so that they'll be able to write or draw the pictures, which we didn't have in the spring. So I think that we are in a lot better shape than we were and we've been planning uh, all summer to have this ready to roll out in the fall so that we are prepared. Thank you so much. And we really are proud of the work that we've accomplished um, really since the spring with our teachers. And we look forward to bringing a very um, good and efficient experience to our children in the fall. So some important notes just that we want to um, ensure that you take away from this meeting is that teachers will be using the same grading scale and report cards that are used traditionally in our in-person instruction for both iSync and iCyber. Sorry. So both programs will have the opportunities for one to help one help. ISD will conduct specific parent and student orientations. We do understand that there is a large tech component um, provided. The first couple of weeks in the iCyber and iSync program will be developing orientation of just the programs that we will be using for yourself as well as your student. Um, so I know that there's a stress level in comparison to um, us using new technology. So we will have orientation and parent nights available for you to learn as well. 504 and IEP accommodations will be followed. Um, students will be assigned a special education case manager in either program. Um, the iSync transfer dates, and that is to transfer into the brick and mortar option, um, are October 23rd, January 8th, March 26th. Again, iCyber is a rolling admission, so you can transfer at any point in time. Um, and if it is a special education student, we will be happy to have an IEP meeting in order for you to maybe transfer into the brick and mortar option. The district calendar will apply to virtual programs. And just to remind everyone, the new start date for school is September 14th. That does apply to iCyber and iSync as well. Um, that will give us enough time for you to gather all of the materials and devices you will need to begin the program. Students will absolutely still participate in extracurriculars and sports, and it is our plan to have those available to our students, whether it be virtually in the beginning of the year or in person later in the year, they still will be available to all of our students. Um, the live conferencing application that we are using currently right now is Zoom, and that's what we will continue to be using is Zoom. Um, IEP meetings will be held through Zoom, as well as DocuSign for signatures. Um, there will be a possible blend for synchronous and asynchronous coursework, especially in our secondary um, grades for electives and what have you. Um, we do understand that that's a possibility. Um, it's also a possibility for some of our special education students to pick iCyber, but still have an opportunity to push into an iSync classroom for the social skills that they might need. Um, Robust and rigorous learning that matches the brick and mortar experience is what we are preparing for and will be implementing come fall. Students can receive meals through the district at assigned pickup times and location. So there is one question um, and it's about when sixth grade starts. Uh, sixth grade will also start on the 14th of September. Uh, that's both in brick and mortar, as well as the cyber program. So from a technology perspective, we are rolling out a one-to-one -one initiative. That's where every uh, child is assigned in a, a device. Uh, we will be signing uh, developmentally appropriate devices, uh, specifically to our pre-K to second grade students. They'll have a touch screen, um, which will allow them to be able to manipulate things with their fingers, easier to navigate uh, at that age band. Grades three through 12 will have a Chromebook laptop and just a little extra info, you know, this is something new for us. So we didn't have the requisite number of devices before, but we have been utilizing a lot of various grants from the federal and state level to be able to fill in those gaps. Um, I'm gonna skip to the cyber students portion 
because every cyber student will be assigned a device. Um, we will also be proposing a technology fee for the devices, for the repairs uh, at next month's board meeting, or excuse me, this August board meeting. And uh, the next slide will talk about the fee a little bit. So it's to cover the cost of repairs, as well as the software and support services that we can provide. As mentioned in previously, my department, uh, we have seven members and we will have a dedicated member for our cyber students. Uh, you can reach us by email or by phone. And we really invested in some new software for our back end, for us to be able to support our families. Uh, that's scheduling utilities as well as uh, our main uh, support email system. So the technology fee uh, will be determined using the historical average cost of repairs. Uh, the fee will be structured so that there will be, uh, for those families who are free and reduced, they'll have an adjusted fee. Uh, the one of the big questions that we get is, uh, can parents opt out if they feel they have a device at home that their students can use? And we are allowing that. Uh, attached with the agreement and the proposal for a tech fee, we're also going to have the minimum device uh, specifications for the opt out. Uh, you know, that's going to and a list of software that will be needed to use a device and be able to function properly within iCyber and iSync. Um, so uh, lastly, I just wanted to mention that a repair, when it, if it becomes uh, a device that is determined to require the purchase of a replacement part. Um, so that's if we have to go out and purchase a new keyboard or screen uh, that will go against the, the technology fee. Uh, software support and other troubleshooting requests are not considered repairs. So we will be implementing a learning management system. It is called Schoology, and this is to respond to that idea of a one-stop shop. It is different than Google Classroom. Um, we will be doing parent and student orientations on how to utilize Schoology. Um, this is just a quick video, which is available on the website, um, the Interbar website as well. So I'm not gonna um, show that, but I will show you a bit of what your student's classroom would look like. Um, so every student from K or every classroom from pre-K through 12 will be set up in the same way, utilizing the same course structure and naming conventions. So you can see here, this is a course that was developed by Ms. Stina at the high school as an example. This is a secondary art course. You see here a banner where the students would have access to tools that they would be utilizing on a daily basis, including tech support, the syllabus and course overview, and some important resources. The student would then click into the unit folder. This is the first unit that the student would experience. And then once they popped that unit open, they would see particular lessons. The first lesson there, and then the different pieces that are associated with that lesson. They would click on that lesson and the information and um, learning materials would come up. The other piece that's important to note here is the calendar. So students will easily be able to see any upcoming events or any upcoming assignments that are due. As a parent, you can see just your student and it will actually allow you to toggle between students if you have multiple students in the district in one application. You can receive um, updates in both email as well as a Schoology app that we will make um, information for which we would make available um, on our website. As a parent, um, you will also be able to access your child's week at a glance. Um, so this is an example of a week at a glance for the beginning um, few days of school. Again, school is changing to start on September 14th for all pre-K through 12th grade students. But this just shows you what a week at a glance would look like. Again, it will be built right into this Schoology course. So it's not something that you would be receiving multiple emails from multiple teachers for. So as been mentioned throughout the presentation, um, the technology as well as the curriculum instruction department have purchased uh, what I like to call a suite of apps that we feel will really enhance the student learning. 
um, specifically for cyber. Uh, one is Zoom, as we're using now. Um, Zoom will be the video conferencing platform for the district. Uh, some features uh, within Zoom are the digital whiteboard, uh, breakout rooms for one-on-one -on -one instruction, as well as an integration with Schoology. And I'll mention that throughout, one of the main focuses that we had when it came to assessing software and making the purchases was can it integrate with Schoology? And that was a big focal point for us. And I feel we've done a good job of making sure that it, it is integrated into Schoology. So that way you're not navigating or your students not navigating to other windows or screens. It's all that one-stop shop that we had mentioned. Um, another one uh, on the screen there, we're talking about Cami. Cami is the ability for teachers to take a document or a worksheet that they have physically, scan it, and I'll edit it so that the student can put some handwriting into it, type into it, allows them to manipulate it, so that way we're not going out and recreating the wheel. Our staff members are able to take things that they were using uh, normally in the brick and mortar and being able to translate it to a digital space, um, as well as we have had some edu more educational supports apps than what's listed, uh, some cloud security programs to protect our devices, as well as our new staff and parent portal. Um, a question that was asked before I begin about special education is about Votech. Um, if your child is scheduled for Votech in the afternoon and you choose brick and mortar, they would go to Votech in the morning. Uh, I'm sorry, they would go to brick and mortar in the morning and Votech in the afternoon. Same with their iSync classes. Their iSync classes would be in the morning and tech in the afternoon. If your tech program is in the uh, afternoon, no, in the morning, the pretty much only option would be for your child is to complete the iSync uh, or iCyber programming as the high school schedule is uh, will be completed at um, uh, around 12 o'clock. Um, following guidance from our special education solicitor and as well as team meetings where all of our teachers, not all, most of our teachers will part, were participated. Um, the plan as of today and, and as of July 29th is that all special education students K through 12 will be able to return to school five days a week. Um, if you do not feel that that is a good option for your child, which we completely understand, the instructional programming of the iSync and the iCyber programming will be, um, will have met all of your child's needs. Uh, we will be having IEP meetings as that would be a change to some of the curriculum, not curriculum, sorry, the programming and SDIs that would, would have been provided had we been in brick and mortar. All related services will be able to be provided through iCyber or iSync, but if you would like and prefer to have your children complete the related services in person, it would be by appointment and we would have that an option as well. As I had stated before, we understand that some students will not be able to um, attain to an hour of an iSync class. So maybe the iCyber option is the best option, but then to have you push into an iSync classroom for possibly a special or science, social studies, or reading and math, depending on your child. Um, if you choose iCyber or iSync, you will have a case manager like as always, and we will be able to meet as often as you need in order to address all of your concerns and questions. Um, the compliance measures, as I had said, even on iCyber and iSync, students will be progress monitored. We have developed a way in order for this to occur through virtual instruction. Um, IEP meetings will be held. Um, we do understand that we had to extend some IEP meetings and they will begin as soon as the teachers get back in August and early as September to um, have a meeting regarding those extended IEPs. We have already begun evaluations and reevaluations and we will continue to move on that schedule. So thank you again for your patience and support in this time. Uh, we had a mental health uh, support and committee meeting over the summer for student wellness. Um, we will be com com generating a Buck's Guide to Brain Breaks and Self-Care Strategies that any teacher in our district will be able to use. We are also going to push out a calming uh, website, if you will, that you will be able to use at home. Uh, the committee is going to continue to meet throughout the year to address any concerns that might arise and social workers and counselors will be available in the iSync and iCyber option for our students. 
In addition, we have purchased an SEL program for our students this year that will be implemented in brick and mortar, iSync and iCyber. SEL stands for Social Emotional Learning. We feel it's a huge component, component from transitioning back to the situation that we had in March to the to start of the school year. So we will be implementing that at the very start of the school year. Um, I had talked about OTPT and speech, but I do want to talk about gifted services. If your child is a gifted and talented child, GIEP meetings will take place as well. Core up services will be offered virtually this, at the start of the school year and possibly all year. Having said that, one-to-one -one consultations will occur for your ch child, so they will be by appointment if you choose um, the brick and uh, sorry if you choose the iSync or iCyber option. If your child was to be accelerated for the start of this school year, they will continue to be so and they will be placed into an iSync or an iCyber classroom for their accelerated subjects. Um, 504 plans, plans will be reviewed and updated as needed in a timely fashion with the start of the school year. Um, as always, we send them home to be reviewed. Parents will have the opportunity to provide any updated medical documentation. If you have that now, we ask that you send that as soon as possible and we can begin to have those meetings. For our English language learners, um, obviously we will continue this instruction as well. Home language surveys for our new students who are registering will be monitored and students will be screened for services. Students who are already identified as English language learners will receive their instruction either in class or virtually. Um, assessments and monitoring will continue throughout the school year. Um, EL students, as always, will receive their core content classes through the regular education teacher with modifications and accommodations based on the WIDA test or screener and the EL teacher will be working with those students throughout the scheduled time. Um, I do know that there was a question about title. Title services will run um, as they always has as an intervention program and will be built into the student's school day for them to receive those services as well. So at this time, we will continue to ask, answer any questions that have been asked in the chat. And we will also show you how to um, complete this survey to ensure that you understand um, how to select the option that works best for your family. So there's a question about the technology fee. Um, the fee is instituted regardless of if a repair is needed. It's more of a coverage for the first repair, or that's what's going to be proposed. Um, again, this will be proposed uh, to the school board at August board meeting. Uh, there's a question about, are they giving us a meeting before school on September 14th? Your, um, that was in regards to information regarding the school year. As always, principals will be in contact with you regarding your child's homeroom teacher if you choose the in-person option, um, where to meet your child's teacher and what have you. That will be the same for iSync um, as well as iCyber as students will have a homeroom and will need a Zoom link to sign on for the first day. So you will receive communication from an administration um, to let you know how to sign on for the first day, who your teacher, your homeroom teacher will be, or, and, or your ELA math teachers. So all of that information will be forthcoming. We are waiting for the registration um, to close, which is August 5th. This is what uh, Dr. Eckman will be showing you as we speak. So you should have received, and I know Ms. Lambert drops this into the chat as well, that you could always cut and paste it out of the chat to put it into your browser. You would have received this survey via the s'more that you um, received from Mrs. Riley last week, a s'more that you received from your building principal, and it's also the first thing that appears on the district site when you put in interversd.org. So on this survey, you would complete it for each separate child that you have in the district, you indicate your child's first and last name, the grade that they're entering, if they have an IEP, and then your last name and first name. The once you do that, it will take you to a next screen and you will see on there the three different options, in-person, iSync, or iCyber. 
you need to select one of those options. Again, completing it by August 5th is our key date. August 6th, um, we will have administrators, you know, who are reaching out to make sure that all responses has been collected by then. So you want to submit this. And again, you are essentially locking in until um, October 23rd. If you at that point would like to take your child into an in-person model, you would have to give us that um, notice by that date. So it would allow us two weeks approximately for the start of the next marking period to have the student enrolled into brick and mortar. So there's another question on the repair, uh, the technology fee. Uh, if there was not a repair needed, would the fee be returned back to the parents? The answer to that is no. It's a, a yearly fee that covers software uh, services as well as support services. Um, so I did see a few uh, other questions that were in the chat. So what went into the decision to not offer the same type of hybrid model for K to six as is offered for the older children? Um, so our answer to that is that the priority that we had when we started the planning process was to ensure that all K to six children had the opportunity to receive in-person education every day. Um, the reason for that is because many parents um, are working and not able to um, have a every other day type schedule for their children. So we wanted to ensure to the best extent possible that children would have the opportunity to participate every day in in-person education um, in grades pre-K to six. Again, you can opt for iSync or iCyber for your K to six child, but there is the option for that child to have in-person instruction every day. If, uh, so there's another question, if school closes, will there be robust virtual learning similar to iSync? Yes, yeah, so we are working with our um, teaching and learning teams to ensure that we would have robust teaching and learning experiences for children. The idea is that students will take this schedule with which they started in fall in brick and mortar and transition right to that in a cyber environment. So you will see a, an experience for children if the school were to go to all virtual that would be very comparable to the iSync program that we are discussing this evening. We'll stay on for a few more minutes if anybody has any further questions. Thank you again for your participation and all of your questions. We will be happy to answer them. If you think of one later, please email us. That was included in the email you received uh, for the link. Also, um, this is a, a recorded session and it will be available tomorrow. We understand that we gave you a lot of information. So if you wanna rewatch it tomorrow, it will be available on the website as well as the cyber brochure um, that has a lot of the information that you heard tonight. Another question, how is physical education being handled? Physical education is going to be handled um, for our secondary students in iSync and iCyber um, would be handled at this point the plan would be to do it asynchronously so in courses that would be developed where students would be completing them at their own self-paced that is the same plan if a student should choose iSync or iCyber in grades k to five as well um, in person if a student is attending school in person we are working with our pe teachers to determine what type of instruction they can deliver in the classroom um, so there would be the incorporation of more health instruction um, students could receive some PE outside and there would certainly be some low, um, low impact activities like yoga and stretches at their seats as well. Um, physical education teachers will also be trained in social emotional learning so they will be bringing that component into the classroom as well. Now that is going to be for high school as well as the rest of the district? Sure. So for high school, especially the physical education classes will most likely be um, offered in an asynchronous component. So if I'm a student who is B day completing my electives, most likely the physical education classes will be asynchronously completed with um, key deadlines that the students would be achieving. 
cool to just not be racist. I realized that I did a That is correct. So that would be for cyber students. So for any electives um, that high school students will be taking, those electives would be taken with students who might on the A day have been brick and mortar. So for electives on the B day, let's just say that the student is assigned core content classes in A day, and then on B day, um, the, any electives that the student would be taking would be um, completed asynchronously. And the PE would be taken asynchronously whether the student is an iSync or iCyber. There is a PE requirement by the state, so it's important to us to ensure that our students are completing all of the requirements through PDE, as well as the graduation requirements through the Interborough School District. Seems like there's one more question. Uh, if families have already completed this survey but changed their mind about the type of learning platform that they may be best for their child, can they switch by the August 5th deadline? Yes, you may certainly switch. You can either log back into the link and change the survey that you first completed, or if you need to, you can re resubmit a survey and um, you can actually let me or Ms. Lambert know and we will gladly go in and delete your initial response and um, that way only your most current response would be showing. Okay uh, and then the last one was the decision to impose a fee based on other districts trying that or based on a financial need for the district. Uh, it's kind of two parts. Yes we are also trying to mirror what other school districts have done successfully with their one-to-one -one program, but also to help us recoup some damages uh, if there's a repair, as well as uh, help us fund for some software, as well as the support that's needed. Um, so the fee is based on that. It's, it's a minimum fee. I don't think, I think we're, we're coming at it from a reasonable perspective, um, understanding that you know, it's something that's going to be needed for us to be able to maintain our devices now that we have, one, taking on a, a larger amount of devices that we normally have year over year, uh, as well as sending them home. All right, thank you everyone for attending this evening. Dr. I can put her address, our email address in the chat box. Uh, mine was also involved with your email that you received. Mr. Sonnet will be happy to answer any tech issues and always your building principal is available for any specific um, questions as well. Thank you so much. Excellent job. Thanks. Very informative. Rob, do I just hit the stop button? <laughs>